Now let's take a look at the types of digital certificates that we have. Earlier I mentioned when Alex wants to receive a digital certificate, she has to provide some information to the certification authority and she has to uh, identify herself too. So she provides some identification cards or something for the certification authority to verify them. So when certification authority receives uh, the information that they need to put in digital certificate, they get all that information, including the public key, and then they send it through a hashing algorithm. So they generate a hash file of all those information. And then the next thing that they do, they use their private key to encrypt or to sign that uh, hash file that has been generated from the information. And then once that hash file is signed or encrypted with the certification authority's private key, then they put that information in the digital certificate and then they send that to the requester. All of this verification and issuing a new certificate can be done by intermediate certification authority too. So the intermediate certification authority can receive the information and they use their private key to sign the hash file and then they uh, issue the digital certificate. And then they have their public key attached to a digital certificate and that's available publicly for um, other people to verify the received certificates. Now, who signed the intermediate ath certification authority's uh, digital certificate? So obviously that has to be uh, the root certification authority. So root certification authority signs or issues a digital certificate for intermediate certification authority and tell them, hey, you can uh, do the task and you can take care of issuing certificate from now on. But then who signs the root certification authority certificate? Well, a root certification authority is the top level certification authority. So they sign their own certificate. Therefore, it is called self-signed certificate. And since it is signed by the topest level certification authority, the certificate is a root certificate. Now, this root certificate in a lot of time is offline for security purposes. So the uh, root certification authority has the root certificate. They use that to sign a certificate for intermediate certification authority. And then after that, they take the root digital certificate offline. And if they need to bring it online, the device that stores this certificate comes online for a while and then goes back offline. In this way, they can protect the security and integrity of the root digital certificate. Now, in addition to root digital certificate, we have other uh, certificates. We have domain digital certificate. Domain digital certificate is usually installed on a web server and they do that to perform two primary functions. One, to ensure the authenticity of the web server to the client so that when the client connects to a web server, they know that they're connected to the right web server. And the second is to ensure the authenticity of the cryptographic connection to the web server so that the client knows that uh, their communication with the server is secure. Now, there are four types of domain digital certificates. We have domain validation, extended validation, wildcard, and subject alternative names. Now, domain validation verifies the identity of the entity that has control over the domain. That means it only authenticates that a specific organization has the right to use the domain. For example, when you go to a website here, when you look at the certificate, then uh, it tells you, okay, this certificate is, uh, for example, I'm on google.com. It tells me that the certificate is google's.com certificate. So it, I can be sure that I'm connected to google.com. So if I need to provide some information or receive some information, I know I am connected to the right uh, server. The second type of uh, certificate is extended validation. Now, this is a domain certificate with extensive validation of the legitimacy of the business. 
That means when an organization wants to request for a domain certificate, they approach the certification authority and certification authority uh, make sure that they verify a few things, a little bit more than domain validation. They check things like uh, legal existence of the business, the physical address of the business, the operational presence of that business and so on. So these kind of things is checked um, when they do extended validation. Now for you, when you look at a certificate, how do you know that that certificate has extended validation? When you go, for example, here into Apple website, if you see that the name of the organization shows up here next to, the, to this log, that tells you that the certificate that they have here is an extended validation certificate. The next type of certificate is wildcard certificate. Now, wildcard is a type of certificate that validates a main domain and all of its subdomains. For example, here on Apple's website, if I go and take a look at the certificate, it tells me that this certificate is issued to www.apple.com. But when I go and look at the uh, Facebook certificate, here when I click here and pick view certificate, I can see that this certificate is issued to star.facebook.com. That means the certificate is valid for Facebook and any subdomain of Facebook. So the certificate can be used for www.facebook.com, apps.facebook.com, chat.facebook.com, anything that is under facebook.com can use this certificate. The fourth type of certificate that we have is subject alternative names. Now subject alternative name allows multiple domains to use the same certificate. So for example, if I go back to that, uh, let's say Google's certificate, if I click here on certificate and go under detailed and scroll down a little bit here, you can see I have subject alternative names. And when I click on that, it tells me that this certificate can be used with all these domains that you can see here. So that is a subject alternative name certificate. Now, in addition to root certificate and domain certificate, we have a more specific type of digital certificate, which is related to hardware and software. So here are some examples. So we have machine digital certificate. Now machine digital certificate is used to verify the identity of a device on a network. For example, uh, a digital certificate can be used on a printer to verify to the client that the printer is an authorized device on the network. Another type of certificate that we have is code signing digital certificate. And that one is used by software developers to sign the program to prove that the program comes from the authorized entity. For example, here I have, uh, let's go back to my computer and here I have uh, NordVPN software. So this is the setup file. If I double click on this, here you can see it says that this is from a verified publisher and that's the name of the publisher. So in this way, I know that this piece of software is verified and it comes from an authorized source. The third type of uh, hardware and software digital certificate is email digital certificate. And we use that to digitally sign and encrypt email messages. So these are the three different types of certificates that we have. We have root uh, digital certificate, we have domain digital certificate, and hardware and software digital certificate. And under each of these certificates, like under domain certificate, you saw we have four different types of certificates. And under hardware and software digital certificate, you can see that we have three types of digital certificates.